So uh, I was saying thank you very much, Ambassador Zhang, um, Mr. President. It is indeed a great uh, pleasure to have this opportunity to brief uh, the Council on the situation uh, at the nuclear facilities in Ukraine. As the Council knows, the IAEA has been actively assessing the situation in these facilities since uh, the um, war conflict began back in February. And you may recall that I had the opportunity to report on the state of affairs to you back in March. Since uh, February 24, the IEA has activated its uh, incident and emergency center, established regular contact with the Ukrainian authorities, and closely monitor the situation at these facilities, as well as activities involving radioactive sources and nuclear material in Ukraine. I have issued frequent, almost daily, um, updates uh, on the IEA uh, website to ensure that everyone has uh, updated information. And I have also personally led uh, two missions to provide assistance um, to Ukraine, one at the South Ukraine nuclear power plant in uh, March, and subsequently a second one at the, to the Chernobyl uh, site in, in April. The agency has also been coordinating uh, offers of assistance uh, from our member states and facilitated the provision uh, of equipment and radiation, such as uh, pro protect, uh, personal protection equipment or radiation uh, monitors. Uh, in total, up to now, uh, 12 uh, member states have offered assistance. The agency, myself, have been in frequent contact with both Ukraine and the Russian Federation to make sure we have the clearest picture possible of the evolving circumstances at this site. We have, the agency has conducted nine safeguards missions in Ukraine at the South Ukraine uh, nuclear power plant, the Rivne uh, nuclear power plant, Kamenitsky nuclear power plant, and the Chernobyl site uh, and Kiev uh, area, which are under um, IAEA safeguards pursuant to the NPT comprehensive safeguards agreement that the agency has uh, with Ukraine. Um, these on-site inspections have enabled the agency to fulfill its obligatory safeguards objectives. Remote monitoring from uh, IEA headquarters uh, of other nuclear power plants uh, and the Chernobyl area remain ongoing. Most recently, I've ha I have had two uh, teams at the Chernobyl site performing critical safeguards verification activities. The two expert missions to Ukraine, which I have led personally, as I said, allowed us to see for ourselves the situation on the ground and provide technical assistance, which has been already given and it's ongoing. Um, there are, of course, a number of uh, humanitarian, political and legal issues which are the, in the um, Limit of the Security Council, and but our work, uh, as you know uh, very well, focus exclusively on technical issues related to the safety, the security, and the inspections, the safeguards inspections uh, in Ukraine. Earlier in the year, and I had also an opportunity to recall this just a little more than a week ago when I was addressing the ongoing. NPT review conference uh, there in New York, I outlined a number of uh, indispensable pillars, seven of them, which are cardinal, which are crucial to ensure safety and security. These include, I will not enumerate them all, but they include in general crucial aspects dealing with the physical integrity, obviously the physical integrity of the plant, uh, the off-site power supply, which, as you know, is indispensable for a nuclear plant uh, for cooling systems to uh, work, emergency preparedness uh, measures and systems, and so on. The thing is, 
that all these seven pillars have been compromised, if not entirely um, violated at one point or the other during this ongoing crisis. Legally speaking, when it comes to um, attacks or the possibility of attacks on uh, nuclear facilities, we are, of course, not working on a vacuum. The international community has taken a stance very early on against this type of thing. And the additional protocols one and two to the 1949 Geneva Conventions prohibit such attacks against um, nuclear um, electrical, as it was said back in the day, generating stations in armed conflict. And on top of that, there have been a number of um, general, uh, uh, general conference um, resolutions from the IAEA. So all of this is a framework that um, must be observed. We, all, we are all aware, and perhaps this meeting and this briefing um, takes place against the backdrop of this. Recently, the situation at the nuclear facilities, and in particular at the Saporizhia nuclear power plant in Ukraine, have been deteriorating rapidly uh, to the point of becoming very alarming. On 5th August, the Saporizhia nuclear power plant was subject to shelling, shelling, resulting in several explosions, several explosions within a site of a nuclear power plant. These explosions took place near the electrical switchboard of a 750 kilowatt external power supply that caused the shutdown of the electrical power transformer and two backup transformers. Consequently, one reactor unit was shut down and disconnected from the electrical grid. So you can see there is a direct link between these external interventions, attacks, and what's happening at the plant. The emergency protection uh, system of the affected unit was triggered and diesel generators were set into operation to ensure the power supply for this unit. This unit, as we speak, remained disconnected from the grid. There was also shelling in the area of the nitrogen oxygen station at the plant. Firefighters quickly extinguished this fire. And, however, um, repairs must be assessed, evaluated, and done. On August 6, one staff member of Saporizia working in the area of the dry spent nuclear fuel storage facility in the vicinity was injured during a new episode of shelling, which also caused some physical damage. Additionally, Ukraine has reported to us that Saporizhia staff have restricted access to the on-site emergency crisis center. As of today, the Saporizhia nuclear power plant has limited availability of off-site power, one external high voltage line and one high voltage backup line to the thermal plant due to the damage of the shelling from the shelling that I just uh, referred. In, in particular, I remain very concerned about the situation at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, and I reiterate that any military action jeopardizing nuclear safety, nuclear security, must stop immediately. These military actions, dear colleagues, near such a large nuclear facility could lead to very serious consequences. Even before these most recent events, I had already expressed great concern about the extremely stressful and difficult conditions faced by the Ukrainian operating staff. The, the agency continues to monitor the situation, 
to identify any pot potential implications that could arise at the facilities. Based on the most recent information, IEA experts have preliminary, have preliminary assessed that there is no immediate threat to nuclear safety as a result of the shelling or other military actions. However, this could change at any moment. We certainly can all agree that any nuclear catastrophe would be unacceptable, and therefore preventing it should be our overarching goal. We must all work together to prevent it. That is our duty. That is our common responsibility. In order to help achieve that, I ask that both sides cooperate with the IEA and allow for a mission to the Saporizia nuclear power plant to proceed as soon as possible. This huge facility, you are aware, it has been said many times, is currently in Russian occupied territory, so it cannot be reached by traveling exclusively through Ukrainian controlled territory. We have worked and we need to work pragmatically with authorities of both countries in efforts to obtain access for our experts to Zaporizhia. I am personally ready to lead such a mission as I did for South Ukraine and Chernobyl, leading a team of experts from the IAEA. We have been preparing for this, and time is of the essence. So I propose, I plead, to hold this mission as soon as possible, Mr. President. Since the installation has been under the control of Russia, the IEA has received information from Russia, as well as from Ukraine, indicating the state of the facility, its operation, and the damage assessment. However, however, the contents of such statements are frequently contradictory. And without, I repeat, without a physical presence, the IAEA cannot corroborate some very important facts. It is those facts gathered during a site visit that are needed so that the IEA may be able to develop and provide an independent assessment of the nuclear safety and security risks. Among other critical activities, what are we intending to do? We would assess the physical damage to the facilities. We will determine whether the main and backup safety and security systems are functional and evaluate the working conditions of the control room staff. The mission to the site will also allow us to perform urgent safeguards activities, verifying the status of the reactors and the inventories of nuclear material, including fresh and spent fuel storage, where we currently have no remote data transfer of surveillance. Furthermore, we need to perform maintenance on all IAEA safeguards equipment in order to ensure the remote data transmission and the, ma and the maintenance of continuity of knowledge, which is indispensable after leaving the facility. Not only would a mission to Saporizia be beneficial to the work of the IEA and to the assessment of the international community of what is going on, but I believe, I am convinced, it would be beneficial to the operators and the regulators of the nuclear plant. 
The previous IAEA missions, which I have mentioned on a couple of occasions, to South Ukraine and Chernobyl, were a proof that being there, establishing the facts, is what is needed at the moment. Overall, I also believe that our on-site presence will both allow us to carry the technical activities that I have just described and also provide a, a stabilizing, stabilizing influence. I want to underscore that the IEA has been ready to perform such a mission since June, when we were ready to go. But unfortunately, due to political factors and other considerations, it was not possible. We've seen what has happened over the past two months. We cannot allow such factors to delay us any longer. I reiterate that the military actions that have even the smallest potential to jeopardize nuclear safety or nuclear security at such a nuclear installation must stop immediately. These actions would lead us to serious consequences. The IEA is ready to help avert such an escalation of the crisis. I want to thank this, the, Sec the Secretary General, who has been steadfast in his support to our mission. I had an opportunity to discuss with him a few days ago in New York. I have followed his statements of support, without which our work would be tremendously more difficult. And I thank the Security Council for having given me this opportunity to state some facts and to also reiterate that this is a serious hour, great hour, and the IAEA must be allowed to conduct its mission in Zaporizhia as soon as possible. I thank you, Mr. Chair.